Hey y'all, I'm back with another NYC apartment related video. So this time I'm gonna be talking about the pros and the cons of living alone in New York City. I lived in a studio apartment for a whole year um, and have had experience having roommates in college. So I'll let you know my personal take. So I'll start with the cons first. I know that's why you're here. Um, so with the first off with cons, paying utilities by yourself. So my utilities, uh, in New York City, you'll pay Con Edison, who is your electricity. You'll also probably pay gas. You shouldn't be paying hot water. If you are, you'll be scammed. I'm telling you right now. Um, so, and then Wi-Fi. So my Con Edison bill usually was no more than like $55. And that's when I maybe turned on the AC or something like that. Um, I didn't pay gas because that actually was included in my rent um and my wi-fi was about forty dollars i have verizon files it was lit um and i used like the, the lowest amount so with that i had to pay that those two the con edison and uh verizon by myself now if i would have had roommates yeah my con edison bill would probably be higher and if i were if we like lived in an apartment that we pay for the gas the gas might be higher depending on if you cook or not i guess um but you would split it so it may still be cheaper you know what i mean and i'll say like for me i my utilities are a little lower bracket I, I can get into that later um for me i feel like or for in general your utilities will probably be lower because you're splitting it and the more roommates you have in general your utilities will be higher because you're using a lot more light and electricity but because you're splitting it more ways you will save more in the end so there's that and then adding on to like paying utilities and expenses rent is more expensive one bedrooms are when you divvy out amount to the amount that you will pay are more expensive than splitting even a two bedroom because on average i know now they say in manhattan like a one bedroom is what close to five thousand dollars as opposed to maybe like a two bedroom that might be three i don't know honestly but let's say hypothetically one bedroom three thousand dollars um, a two bedroom might be four thousand dollars, but at that point, y'all are both paying two thousand dollars each. So, you know what I mean? Three thousand dollars by yourself, or two thousand dollars to share a four thousand uh, dollar two bedroom apartment. And then usually it's bigger too; you get more space because it's more square footage in order to fit the two bedrooms. So there's that. Another thing is that you have to clean by yourself. So it might be a good reason, you know, good thing that's a little smaller than what you would get if you had a roommate or two. Because if, I know some people, you know, they live in one bedrooms by themselves. So that means you have to clean the living room, your bedroom, and the kitchen, and the bathroom by yourself. I lived in the studio, so I was cleaning, you know, that one common area of square footage and then you know my bathroom now when you have roommates you can have like alternate okay i clean the kitchen this week you clean the bathroom this week or it could be one person cleans the entire house this week and the other person cleans the entire house the next week and do it etc etc and the more roommates you have the more time in between the next time when you're the person to clean you know but when it's just you you're the only one who cleaning Moving on, you have to furnish it by yourself. And furniture is not cheap, especially the ones that are for, you know, the living room. So like the coffee table and sofas are expensive. Trust me. Uh, I can't even get into a whole video about how much I spent on furnishing my apartment. Um, that's a different topic though. So yeah, you have to take that into consideration. And also with furnishing, furniture delivery because they have to deliver your furniture. And depending on what type of building you live in, you got to reserve the elevator and all that. I lived in one of those buildings where you had to reserve the elevator. So you had to like pick in a furniture delivery date and let them know and send them all types of stuff. So with that, I was the only person who can answer for the furniture. Like nobody else could because I was the only one living there. But if you had other roommates, obviously I'll split in probably the cost of some of the furniture or whatever. They could be there. Like if you got to go out, you got to go to work, you got to go do something cool. They can be, if somebody's at the house, they can come and sign for the furniture um another thing oh speaking also about furniture too i want to go on that you have to assemble the furniture by yourself too that's something i want to add yeah i had to assemble all that by myself that was not fun some of my mom did help when she came but you know for the most part I, i'm the one who lives there so i gotta put it together or obviously the, sometimes they'll have the services where the moving people can also come like for my bed i put in the assembly 
payment like i want you to assemble the bed i'm not i'm not playing around with that it's, it's okay i don't have i'm i'm not about the builder that's not me okay so moving on to no one is around if something were to happen to you and i will elaborate that on that right now so what i mean by that is this is an example uh the first time i took a shower in my apartment i, I had a bathtub right um I normally, when I've been in a bathtub, like, where I grew up, I had a bathtub. It was never slippery. For some reason, this one was a slip and slide. Because I was in that bathtub, and probably, like, a good five minutes into my shower, I almost slipped and fell. Literally, the only thing that saved me was, like, this, um, the hanging shower caddy that you put over your shower head. I had to hold on to that for dear life to not fall and bust my behind. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, bro, if I would have fell... Like, if I would have held it and it would, like, gave way or something, or if I didn't grasp it or whatever, because also my hands where I could slip, and I would have knocked my head up beside the tub or the sink or whatever, who would have found me? Who really would have found me? I live by myself. So, that's the thing. Like, if you have roommates or something bad happens to you, somebody can call somebody, like, the, the doctors, your mama, somebody can call to get you some help. Another con is it can be boring slash lonely. And I do think those two things are different. So boring in a sense of you by yourself. So it's not really anyone to talk to like sporadically in the moment or if something were to happen, like watch a show together or something and talk about it. Like, you know, um, lonely, I guess, in a sense of maybe you're having a bad day and it's kind of easy maybe to have somebody there who who's just, you know, convenient because they, they live with you that you can talk about your day with and be like, oh, this happened to me at work or this ha happened... Da, da, da. And yeah, both can talk about that. So it is sometimes gets boring and lonely because you live by yourself. And to add to that, <laughs> um, I feel like no one talks about is I know that some people, when they bring their friends, their family, significant others, whatever, to their apartments they share with other people, the common area is messy. Cause I feel like this happened in college. That's another story. Um, the and the common area is messy. Even if they contributed to the mess, and they could have been the messiest, they probably if anybody were to make a comment or say something, could say like, "Oh, you know, that's just my roommates. That's my sweet mates." Blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Because there's there's no way to really hold them accountable for it unless the person knows. Like, they isn't that like your sock or <laughs> like isn't that your thing? You know what I mean? But like they leave a dish or something, and it's common, you know, household use of everybody uses it. You can't pinpoint it to one person. But if you live alone, if somebody comes to your apartment and the common area is messy or any part is messy, that's on you. They know it's a reflection of your mess. Okay, now to go on to the pros, because for me, it will always be a pro. I do not like sharing my space. So I wanted to put this one last so we can have some time. All right, going down. So decorating. I get to decorate any way I want. When you live by yourself, whatever. My studio apartment looks so childish. I have a whole video tour, empty and also furnished. You can check out my channel. Maybe it'll be in the end card. Either way, it's there. So that was my aesthetic. I'm a very like Barbie girl, um, very pink, green type of aesthetic. Some people don't like that. Some people think it's tacky. Some people think it's childish once you pass a certain age, whatever. That's not me. That's who I am at, at the core. So for me, because I live alone, I can decorate like that. I had whole curtains that were supposed to be for a, a child's bedroom and it had little star cutouts and those little lace and stuff it was so cute but i know some people would think that's tacky and they wouldn't want that in their living space or whatever but it was just perfect for me now to combat the con that i said about paying utilities by yourself there's a thing you know you're only paying for your utilities though and I'm someone, like I said, I, I think I said this, uh, my bills never were higher than $55. And I know for a lot of people, that's low. Like some people, even when they live alone, it's in the hundreds because they turn the AC on all the time. They have the heat on all the time, right? Um, So with that, for me, I feel like if I would have roommates, I probably almost would have paid the same amount or more because mo the average person I think uses more electricity than I do. So it it may not have like worked out in my favor to split utilities. Um, also, it's annoying because let's say you're paying higher utilities or even you're paying high utilities in general and it's not for something that you're using. Like someone's turning the AC, but you would never turn the AC on. Maybe you don't even like turning the AC on because you're cold, but this person always turns it on. Now you're paying for it on top of being cold. 
Also going off of that, another pro, you get to do whatever you want. If I want to have the heat on in like the springtime, because I like it toasty and you're somebody, you know, you get hot all the time. Nobody's bothering me because I live alone. I can do what I want. Temperature can be whatever I want. If I don't want to turn the AC on because I get cold easily, I don't have to turn the AC on in, in, in even the summer or whatever. That some people may prefer that. Um, another example, you know, you can walk around however you like. As long as you close some curtains, you, you can present yourself in your home however you see fit. And I love that person. You can sing if you want. Just don't disturb your neighbors. You can watch any TV show that you want. You're not disturbing anybody who's working on this, doing calls, what have you. But also at the same time, nobody's disturbing you if you need quiet. Another thing. Um. So another pro is you'll know you'll pay your rent. I hope so. I'm hoping if you're watching this, I, I, I want for you to, to have the ability to trust yourself that you will pay your own rent. Um. And the reason why well, I can say that for myself, I know I can pay my rent. And I'll even let you know, I moved into my apartment one month after I moved into my apartment. I lost my job. Now, at the flip side of that, I would have had anxiety having roommates and then telling them, oh, I lost my job. Because the first thing, they're not going to give, they, you think they're going to care that I lost my job? They're going to think, oh my God, like, how are we going to pay, like, you going to make sure you pay your bills? Or they might, like, start, you know, trying to replace me. Like, oh, okay, then maybe you need to move back home immediately and we'll replace you. You know what I mean? Like, now I don't have to worry about that because I knew I could pay my bills because I had the savings. So, but I also understand on their perspective, they don't know. They don't know me and my, like, financial situation if I were to have roommates. So, they, I can understand if they would be apprehensive. But on, like, the, the, the way I meant it originally was, you know, there's a lot of people who don't pay their bills. And I know the reason why a lot of people say to get roommates, have roommates, especially in New York City, like, people have roommates well into the age of when most people in america have roommates like in their 30s because it's so expensive um especially if you want to live closer and closer to manhattan or like the central parts of manhattan so but the problem with that is the more roommates you have usually the higher the rent is in general and like statistically you're setting yourself up that there's more of a probability that one of these people won't pay on time and you have to cover them because y'all all sign a lease it's all under your name unless they give y'all separate leases it's if you pay rent late, they're not saying this person paid rent late. You're all paying rent late. If you didn't pay it in full, you didn't pay, you all didn't pay it in full. And I don't like that because I know I have my money. I have my money on time. So I don't want somebody else's child messing up my credit. Also, another thing that is like a pro, but then also slash a con for having roommates um, is a pro is you can bring people over whenever you want because you live alone. I have my mom come and stay with me for a while. Like sometimes like a week or so. It doesn't matter. Because it's just me, you know? She can come and stay with me. But if I have roommates, I would feel a little uncomfortable. She might even feel uncomfortable too. Like to be staying in somebody, technically somebody else's house, you know? Because it's not that other kid isn't her, her kid. But when you live alone, it doesn't matter. Like I can have my friends over. We can watch TV. We can just chill as long as we both want, you know, to chill there. There's no, we don't feel the need to like not be in the common area or like the living room because, oh, maybe they, this person wants to use it or whatever, because it's yours. You can do what you want. But also at the flip side, I, I just want to add this as a con to have a roommate. If you had a roommate, they could do this to you. They could also do this. So that's another thing. You won't have people in your house that you don't want to have in your house. And also to go uh, a pro that kind of combats the con that I talked about with something with bathrooms. Well, yeah, you the one who got clean the bathroom, but also with that, you know, the only thing that you're cleaning is a result of you, if you know what I mean, because it is a little kind of gross to be cleaning the bathroom and you see certain things and you know that's not from you, um, but you still, you know, y'all agree to take turns cleaning it, people's hair in the shower, all that stuff, at least you know is your hair. And you can also clean it whenever you feel like it. So if you, for some reason, are feeling lazy and you feel like skipping cleaning that week, you could skip cleaning that week. You just sh probably shouldn't invite nobody to your house at that point. But if you're someone who you always like it clean and you always like it pristine, you could do that because you're also only cleaning after yourself. 
kind of going uh, back to like the knowing that your bill will be paid like your utility bill will be paid on time and you're only paying for your utilities your rent's going to be paid on time because you know you won't pay your rent um also your security deposit is safer now obviously you pay less than security deposit because you're you're splitting it i'm assuming um but you don't have to worry about somebody else messing something up in the apartment and then now y'all security deposit is gone you know or part of it is gone you're not going to get the same amount back and i know some people will say like oh but then the person who messed messed it up they'll just have to compensate people we all would love to think people are like that we really would love to believe people have integrity and will do things like that there are some people who if no especially the more roommates you have if you can't pinpoint who who did what they won't admit it and then even if you know for a fact it's this person everybody knows it's that person you have to chase that person down to give you your money your portion of the security deposit that you're going to lose or for them to fix it before y'all move out so that you don't lose your security deposit at all also going out moving out moving out is easier when you live alone because when I decided I didn't want to renew my lease, the only person I had to answer to was just my leasing office. In terms of the people who were living in my apartment, which were just me, who, who else did I need to tell? Because when you want to move, if you don't want to renew your lease when you live with other people or you want to um, break your lease when you're living with other people, now you got to talk to those people and then it's this weird thing. I get it because you're inconveniencing them. Now they got to find. If you're breaking your lease, they have to find someone to come and sublease under your takeover the lease. If you don't want to renew your lease, you have to give them enough time to tell them that so that they can find somebody to, again, take over your lease for the, the new um, lease signing year and all that. Um, then also you also have to agree if you if you even want to renew your lease. Like, do you want to renew it for a year? What if somebody wants to renew it for two or one and a half? Like, now y'all all got to agree on how long y'all want to sign a lease. When you live by yourself, it's only up to you what you want to do. And one more thing about the bathroom. You don't have to wait behind anybody in the bathroom. Because most places, even when you have multiple bedrooms and you're having roommates, they'll still have one bathroom. Usually. So... And with that, even if somebody has an in-suite bathroom, that's just them. The rest of y'all, y'all sharing that one bathroom. And speaking from, like, specifically a New Yorker, you know when you have to go somewhere and you're losing, using, like, Google Maps or MTA or whatever, right? And you're trying to find, like, you know what train you need to take at what time to get to the place that you need to go at a certain time. Or you know what bus you need to take at a certain time like you know the bus is coming you right about to leave you just need to go to the bathroom real quick or just do a touch-up or you're trying to get yourself together to catch a certain train or a certain bus and imagine you're you're ready to go you trying to go to the bathroom somebody in there and you're gonna be there for a while but when you live alone you don't got none of those problems the bathroom was always open in my house another pro that goes along with you can do what you want even before you move into the apartment or when you're even looking for apartments when you live alone or you plan on living alone at that point you're the one who picks the apartment so for me i want to live in a very specific neighborhood i wanted specific utilities utilities amenities that's what i meant <laughs> specific amenities right and i knew what my budget was and what i could afford now if i were to have had roommates they may not care about living in that specific neighborhood, which is fine because that would have been inconveniencing for them that they're more open and I'm being very strict about, well, I want to live here type thing, you know? Um, and at the same time, for me, I want a, the certain amenities of the unit and the building and maybe they wouldn't want to pay that premium for it, you know? But for me, it's worth it. So in all, you're, you don't have to compromise. And I feel like compromising on where you live, especially in New York, which is a place that you're going to spend a lot of majority sometimes of your paycheck on, I don't know how I would feel about that. Like, it's different when, you know, like I said, I had roommates in college, but I was like dormy. You just stayed in your dorm, whatever. It wasn't that big of a deal. But paying the money that I'm paying now, like what I was paying before, even though it would be less if I had roommates, um, I don't know. It just still would be like, I would want a place I really, really like. And the, if the only reason why I didn't get the apartment I really, really liked is because my other roommates didn't agree on it. Eh, that would just suck to me personally. 
So that's another uh, pro, big pro for me about living alone. When you apartment hunt, you're apartment hunting by yourself. You do the viewings by yourself. You don't have to, oh, this person can't make, you gotta take a video, then show the video or reschedule viewings for this other person to see the viewing. You make the decision on the apartment you like and the area that you like, you know how much you're willing to spend. You sign a check or give the payments. It's you're the final say. And lastly, you just feel like a real adult, I'm gonna be honest. Um, and when I say this, it's because when you know the reason why you got accepted into the apartment, you got, um, your, your, like, the reason why your bills are being paid, your rent, utilities, all this stuff, is because you're paying it. There's nobody subsidizing your living. You know that you are not dependent, you have, you don't have the anxiety of thinking like, Oh, I, gotta, I hope that this person pays on time. I got to chase this person for money. I got to do this. I have to find a roommate to go roommate hunting with even before I even get the apartment. I hope that their credit is good. They, they have enough money in their account. All They make enough for us to qualify where our income to get the apartment. Because you can't qualify on your own. Because if you could, then maybe you, you would have done that. Um, but when you can live on your own, you just feel so... Like, that's just... There's, such a feeling of accomplishment. So those are all the pros and the cons. If you can think of any, please put them in the comments below. I'll look them over. Uh, but in general consensus, I personally feel is the pros way, way, way outweigh the cons of living alone. If you want to have friends over, you can have friends over. If you don't want to be lonely or you want to have company. If you want like, in terms of the savings, yes, you save more, but that's only if your roommates pay their rent and utilities. If they pay their way, yes, you will save the money. But if they don't pay their way, you're actually going to end up spending more money than you would have if you would have just lived alone. And then they also stressing you out. And then you're living with people that you resent because they're not paying their way. You know? So that's my two cents. But thank you for watching and love ya.